Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another Mech Merlin stream. Today is a build stream day and also my monthly giveaway day. So if you guys are interested in winning a cool keyboard prize, definitely stick around. But before we begin this stream, let's talk about something very, very important. What is Merlin drinking? <laughs> so this one, I got something a little unique for you guys today. This is from my local Asian grocery store. It's called Apple Cedra. Why did I pick it? Mainly because this is another drink from my home country of Taipei, Taiwan, actually. See that? Um, this was very popular. I feel like ever since I was a kid, back in the 80s and 90s, this was super, super popular back in the day. Picked this up for about two bucks. In Taiwan, you can actually pick this up for maybe what, 25 cents. <laughs> so I was feeling a little nostalgic recently and was like, hey, why not? So I picked it up. Let's see, hopefully everyone's doing great today. I see 21 viewers at present. No one's really said anything on chat, so I don't know who's on. All right. See, chart says, oh boy. Chart is the customer, guys. If you guys remember, um, he had me build this KBD67 Mark II just last week, I believe. Yeah. Let's turn on some music while we're at it. Tommy Chong says, hello there. Hello to you as well. All right, I guess one of these mason jars takes in about an entire can. You can see it's very similar to some of the ciders that I usually drink. This is just your typical non-alcoholic non cider. Something that I've liked a lot. <laughs> All right. Let's see, Fakey420 says, I'm here, just joined. Thank you, thanks for joining in. Mm. Yep, tastes just like home. All right, hopefully this drink will last me the entire episode, but we'll see. I know I normally drink things pretty quick, but here we go. Let's just show off what I'm building today really quick. For those of you who have never seen an 8X Mark II before, it comes in a packaging like this. It won't even last for the unboxing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I drink things super quick. All right, so it's got this paper covering around it. Yeah, that's, that, that's the paper bit. And this is what the actual box looks like. See that? nice silver box but before I unbox it I just want to show you what it originally looked like as you guys can see the title of my stream is Seracoded KBD8X so let's just talk about this really really quick here we go for those of you who don't know the KBD8X is actually on group buy right now on on KBD fans, it's going for 299. It's going all the way till August 15th. It started last week, so if you actually got in on it last week, yours might already be shipping because they had some some in stock units. But for everyone else, you got till August 15th. The KBD 8X is the TKL available in win keyless and standard form or standard layouts. Let's see. PCB was designed by IO3, one of the more prominent members of our community. And what else? What else do we have here? It's got an ESD protected PCB. It's got flex cuts on the PCB as well. It's got a top mount brass plate and it's got a brass weight on the bottom as well. Um, if you guys hang around the KBD fans discord, you'll notice that people say this board actually sounds better than a KBD 67. Um, I, for I, I completely forgot all about that because at the same time that I picked this up from chart here, I, 
I also returned his KBD67. <laughs> so I wish I could have compared the two, but oh well, oh well. All right, so just an another thing right before I unbox this, we, we are building this with Novel Key Cream Switches, currently out of stock on Novel Keys. This is the second board that I build with cream switches, actually. The first one was the was the E7 V1, and I really, really like them, up to the point that I even bought my own. <laughs> I bought my own, so I, I don't quite know what board this is going into yet, but we'll see. Let's see, I'm seeing a few follows. Sky2934 and Park the Shark. Thanks, man. Cool. And, you know, this is what the board looked like. Unfortunately, when you buy stuff from KBD fans, they're not the best when it comes to quality control and just making sure things look right. If you guys watched my KBD67 Mark II review, I was complaining a lot about that. And it's, it's always very sad to see someone spend up to $300 and get something like this. See, let's, let's take closer looks. Look, this is the bottom case, right? You guys can see all the scratches around the corners, right? And even on the weight. It's it's really sad, yeah. Here, let's take a closer look. That is the weight right there. I'm not sure if that's more scratches or just oxidization. Maybe they can buff right out, who knows, right? You continue looking at it, see? Okay, that that's definitely a chip right there. Look at all that. And if you guys bought the first KBD 8, 8Xs, I think it's similar to the KBD 67s, in which the brass weights were all shiny, but it was a pain to QC, so they switched to brushed finishes. And obviously, it's still a pain to QC, because they still can't get it right. See all that? They still can't get it right. <laughs> and here we go. This is the part that just really upsets me. Look, look, look at that. Like, who in their right mind, like, who at the factory looked at this and, and was like, yup, that's acceptable. The customer will be happy about this. Yeah. Ah, well, that will buff right out. Sure, sure. See that? Look. And, and and I'm not talking about like a small scrape here and there. This is this is consistently scruffed. <laughs> Tommy Hong says that's an F stock. Yeah. See Park the Shark says grab the one of the in stock PC eight X's. This will be my second build, so I'm absolutely using the stream as a guide before it gets here. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Let's see. Fingers crossed my PC doesn't come scuffed. I I sincerely hope that anytime you buy from KBD fans, you will not get a scuffed board, but know that it's possible. Look at that, like, like all the photos I showed you earlier were inside the board. This is on top of the board. Look at that. What in the world? What in the world, right? Seriously. So even if you spend $300, it's not guaranteed that you'll get a nice looking board. So because of all this, Chart Chart had to actually bring it to a local Cerakoting place and see if he could fix it up. So let's take a look at the quality of this, of this Cerakoting. If you guys don't know what Cerakoting is, Cerakoting is more popular in areas that have guns. It's a, it's more used as a gun coating than like anything else. Here we go, here's the PCB. Here's the PCB, as you can see, there's the two flex cuts in there. We've got our RGB underglow, which is funny because the KBD-8X doesn't really have underglow support in its case. It's got USB-C. And I always like to point this out on boards that have it, but you can see the ESD protection chip right there. If you're ever curious to know if your PCB has ESD protection, um, look for a small chip 
It's usually a four pin chip and it is usually placed as close to the USB port as possible because that's what needs to be protected. Um, if you look at the solder mask, sometimes it will say U2, U1, U stands for microchip, I guess. Like that. So yeah, just like look around it. See, it's using an Atmega 32U4. It's got a reset button right over there. Can you zoom in on the ESD chip? I will not zoom in, but I will bring bring it up closer to my camera. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah, you guys can see it right underneath that USB port right there. That small chip. Here, let me try and point it out. It's right there. That guy right there. It's really, really tiny. It's all. On this board in particular, it's the same size as the diodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I O three is a is a very prominent designer in our in our community. And believe it or not, I think he's only in his early twenties. He's super talented. Here is the plate. Actually, Chart didn't post any photos of the plate, so let's see. Is the plate scuffed at all? Yes, it is. I see four scratches right right over here where your caps lock is. What else? Oh, wait. That was on the back, actually. So th that's fine. On, on the front of the plate, see two scratches over there. One down here. Yeah, there's one over by the caps lock as well. Oh, right between the T and the Y. Not, not as obvious as those photos I, photos that I showed you guys, but it, it's still there. It's still present. Smudge says, was this bought off of Mac Market? No, this was direct from KBD fans. All right. So let's say, let's, let's bring that up again. Here, let's see if I can do a side-by-side -side thing here. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Let's go open it up. You guys are gonna be so surprised. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> there we go. The Cerakoting. Cerakoting is extremely durable. It's more durable than anodization. It's more durable than some powder coats. Unicorn says, hello, Chad and McMurlin. Hello to you, too. But here, look at it. Check it out, guys. All those scratches that were present on the front of the board are now all gone. Looks absolutely beautiful. There is nothing around the weights as well. People are saying that navy is clean. It's not really navy. It's more gray than anything see so unfortunately the weight is still pretty scuffed um chart i think one way you could fix this up is taking some really light sandpaper and just going through it like i would take i would take the weight off first before doing any of that but i think sandpaper will get rid of all of this yeah yeah. This feels really good. I didn't give them the weight, just the board. Yeah, because only the board is Cerakoted, not the weight. But yeah, you could probably clean this up with some fine grit sandpaper. Man, I'm like looking all the I'm looking at all these photos right now. And basically the Cerakote just Cerakote took care of most of it. Obviously, there are some parts that are really deep, like this guy right here. That's still present in the Cerakote. 
but it's not white. See anything else on the corners? Yeah, that one's gone too. It's really good. Yes, so like the Cerakote won't take care of the really deep gouges. But this is amazing. Um, Chart, I think I may have to visit this store for some of my boards actually. This is really good job. Yeah, check out this guy. This thing right here. You can see that around this edge, there were lots of gouges and scratches, but that's, that's all gone as well. Very nice. Only the last picture is outside the board. Everything else is inside. Yeah, this one right here, right? That's gone. It's done really well. Awesome. Chart, how much did it cost to do like the Sarah coating for this? Was it like a hundred, hundred twenty, hundred forty? Yeah. Hundred fifty. Ah, okay. Plus taxes. And here in Washington State, we're at ten percent sales tax. <laughs> Yeah, this turned out really nice, man. I am glad that it worked out for you. But it, it, it does suck that you spent 300 bucks on this to get such a bad QC job that you had to spend another 150 bucks just to get it right. I, I personally don't agree with that. <laughs> All right. So, um... Cerakote is a very durable finish. I'm not sure if you guys can see it completely on the screen, but one thing I don't like about Cerakote is that it it looks like the board is painted and sometimes that doesn't look too good for me. <laughs> yeah. All right. See, did it come straight from KBD fans? Yes, it did. You've never seen something that scuffed from KBD. Um, yeah, not not even my KBD 67 w was that scuffed. There we go. Let's see, Chart also sent me some stabilizers, so we will start with lubing these stabilizers. Want to mention how the weight fell out in transit? <laughs> That's, that's unbelievable, man. That is un unbelievable. KBD fans needs to do a better job. <laughs> there are a ton of horror stories on IO3 Discord. This is actually sadly very common. KBD pissed I off and used the wrong screws. Oh, great. Excellent. <laughs> So the screws in there now are the right ones, this chart. That's great. Because if you remember on your KBD67 build from last week, I also got some questionable screws. Yeah, these are Durox and from Novel Keys right there. Currently, there are still some Durox left on Novel Keys, just that you're out of stabilizers wires. Cerakote makes it brighter. I think it makes it shinier, in a sense. So Cerakote is not a clear coating, though Though you can have a clear Cerakote coat, but you can pick different colors for it. That's why you get like, let's see. Um, chart, what, what was the name of the company that you took this through? Maybe I can visit their website really quick. Those, those wires pop out pretty consistently. That is the whole reason why I, I currently bought C3 stabs. Spectre Industries, okay. Let's see, Rafa Mundus has followed, thanks man.
C3 still have problems with PBT. Really? I tested mine on an E8.5 and it didn't seem to have any issues, but I only tested the space bar. So who knows? All right, Spectre Industries. Let me just look that up really quick. Spectre Industries. You guys are wondering, the board in front of me is the NK65 version one aluminum edition. The reason why I have this in front of me is because on June 30th, 12 o'clock EDT, Novel Keys will be re releasing the V2. So if that's something that interests you, the budget is under 100 bucks. And I believe the regular aluminum version is 180 at this point. Expect for it to go really, really quick. All right, Spectre Industries. Um, Hold on, before I show this off, because this is just a bunch of guns. Um, What's the terms of service with Twitch and me showing off guns on stream? <laughs> let, let me look that up really quick. Twitch, TOS, and guns. All right, it just says, when it comes to guns, you cannot threaten or brandish knives, firearms, or weapons to yourself. Brandish. Brandishing lethal or harmful weapons such as guns, knives, or explosives. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll just be safe. Let's, let's just find something here that's not a gun that, that they've Saracoded. But all they have are... <laughs> Looks like they're open today as well. Alright. Yeah, it looks like all the stuff that they have seems to be guns. Okay, I will not show that. <laughs> I will not show that, just to be safe. This was the first board that they have done. I think they did a good job. Though the person to ask is Tyson Builds. Tyson is very familiar with all of this since he ran group buys for them he would be able to give a better a better assist uh, a better assess assessment whether or not they did a good job all right i like to lube stabs with 205g0 well i like to lube the housing with 205g0 and the wire with dielectric grease When I do this, I am very, very generous with the lube. Not as generous so that it would be over lubed, but a lot more generous than when I'm doing switches. You can't point a weapon at someone or threaten, obviously, like, but that's. <laughs> Isn't that like a criminal offense? <laughs> So the board in front of me right now actually has the Novel Keys Taihao Cubic Black on White. On Monday, tomorrow, oh, no, on, on, on like Monday actually, sorry. Not, not tomorrow, but on Monday, he will be releasing PBT Cherry ones of these, which I much prefer to Cubic actually. So I'm hoping to get in on those. 
Park the Shark says, I'm a criminal attorney, and that's definitely a criminal offense, at least in my jurisdiction. <laughs> Threatening someone with a weapon? How could that possibly not be criminal? <laughs> the QA notice with those? T talking about like the key sets? I've not seen any notice about them. The first instance that I ever saw of them was actually when Novel Keys posted their their restock notice. So I'm curious because Cherry is my favorite profile. So I'd prefer if I had more Cherry sets. You personally think that the legends on Cubic are way better than those on the Novel Key Cherry PBT? Well, Taihao has been making key sets for a long, long time. Weird Twitch somehow unfollowed you. Uh, you can follow me again. So I see quite a few people here. I see Unknown German, Big Taro, Zuzu Jess. Thanks guys for following. too much loop. <laughs> if you guys have any questions regarding the build, what I'm doing or just keyboards in general, feel free to at me and all that. And as I was saying earlier, this is another customer build of mine. If you guys are interested in having me build any of your boards, my Discord name is, hash is MechMerlin hashtag 29999. Um, send me a message and I'd be happy to build your boards for you. I am located in Seattle, Washington, so if you are international, shipping might be a very expensive cost. Let's see, what, what was it? In November of last year, someone from Malaysia contacted me and was like, Hey Merlin, can you build one of my boards for me? And I calculated shipping to cost like 85 bucks. That I'm like, uh, you sure you want to be paying this? Because it's 85 to me and 85 back to you. Are C3 is going to be available again or should I go Duroc or Zeal? Um, I'm really hoping that they become available again. Now, if you guys watched my Thursday stream, you may have noticed that I forgot to buy wires. <laughs> I forgot to buy any of the stabilizer wires, so I'm kind of dead in the water here. Abbott says, use net parcel if you ship international. Really? I will have to look into that. I think the most international build, build that I get these days is from Canada. And Canada is just across the border from me.
the C3 V2 stabs work with PBT? Um, from my testing, it did, but someone earlier on the stream actually said that they don't. So I might need to do more testing. The testing that I did was on an E8.5, and I only tested it on the space bar. So yeah, maybe maybe later on I'll try it on the shift keys, enter on the backspace. See what happens there. Because that's very unfortunate. Because the whole reason why I did C3V2 was so that I could use PBT caps. Last housing. Last housing. Right. What caps are those on the keyboard above? Um, these are Taihao black on white cubics. Okay. Why wouldn't PBT work on the C3 stabs? Um, I think it's like the tolerances are a little bit different. At least for V1, it was very noticeable on the space bar. You would you would push it down, and it would stay down. It's like you you would lift your finger, and it would just stay down. So I've only ever seen it happen on ePBT. Other PBT sets seemed fine. Like I used XDA, DSA, MT3, and they were all fine. So it's something with the ePBT caps and the C3 stabs. Right, so I said earlier, I like to use dielectric grease on the wires. Why dielectric grease? Simply because I have so much of these. I bought this back in 2010, guys. I used it for my spark plugs. And I still have so much left. Been using it since 2010. And I believe I bought this whole container for about like eight bucks. No, so eight bucks versus, wait. My 205G0 is from Project Keyboards. This whole container is 40 bucks. Does your dielectric grease smell? Um, I'd say it smells just like regular dielectric grease. It's odorless. Like, I feel like I've only ever smelled the grease when I was working on my car with it.
stuff I once got smelled metallic. Um, dielectric grease is what? What's it made of? Silicone. This one in particular is... Doesn't actually list it. <laughs> Maybe that's the normal smell for the stuff. Yeah, I use Permatex branded, branded ones. You may find other brands such as Superlube, but I like to use Permatex. chart if you're still on forgot to ask you earlier did you want this to be stepped caps lock as well like how I did your KBD 67 or do you want regular caps lock yes please okay stepped caps lock it is you're actually my first customer who ever requested stepped caps lock. Chart wants ISO. Okay guys, I'm gonna have to end this stream. I'm not doing like an ISO build. <laughs> I'm canceling the stream right now. Is it possible to show up a close-up of the amount of that you use on the wire? Um, I basically make sure that these guys, it's probably like a less than one millimeter coating around it. Right here. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I just have to bring it up to my camera more. There it is. Focus! Focus! There it is. <laughs> ISO seems neat, but it's too hard to get used to. I actually typed an ISO for the first probably 10 years of my computing life, just because that's what they had in, had in Taipei, Taiwan. All right. Got all the stabs lubed. Let's put them aside right now. We are going to test the PCB. Make sure that it works. Before we do anything, make sure that the PCB works. You tested it, don't scare you again. Um, I will test it anyway, just to be absolutely sure. Because you never know. You never know. my my handy QMK configurator tester config.qmk.fm test keyboard I gave you a heart attack building the 67 last week <laughs> there we go lights turn on and everything hooray do all the all the LEDs work 
Yes, all of them are turning on. Most excellent. Computer also detects the keyboard. Great. All good news. Let's, let's try and trigger every key now. Tommy Hong says no via. Um, this board does have via. I use QMK Configurator because number one, I am on staff at QMK. And number two, QMK Configurator actually tests for key chatter. Also, I don't like the fact that you have to install an app when, when, when like testing the software. I mean, when, when like testing your keyboard. So I would much prefer that you have a web browser type thing. Oh, everything got shifted. That's weird. F12 is not working. There we go. There we go. You got a Gandalf Fia staff? No, I do not. I have a McMerlin staff. I have, I have a keyboard staff. Hey, these guys aren't registering. Very odd. There we go. So far, so good. What mouse pad is this? Looks kind of cool with the minor information. This is the Cherry MX patent. And everyone always asked about that. But this is a mouse pad that I got from Keyclack back in 2015. They don't actually stock it anymore. But I've been trying to find it. And the closest one that I could find was actually from Flash Quark. You guys wanna, oops, not that one. We go and flashquark.com you can actually go to they have something that's similar it's not exact but here we go Q 
Sharing cases. I actually just saw it yesterday. Dust accessories, dust mats. There we go. Here we go, see? So they've got something like Blue Angels for $19.99. It's not the one that I have, but it, it's very similar. It, it gives you like the like the same information. See, it tells you all of the force graphs right there. Force graphs, some measurements here and there. But the blue one, you've got here. I guess I'll just post this link then. You've got an orange on black one, like so. You've got the pink one, you've got a green one, you've got a yellow one. But, let's see. Yellow on black is actually out of stock as well. Interesting, but yeah, these are 20 bucks. And Flash Quark is located here in the United States. Where exactly? New York. Cobalt, thanks for joining in. All right, I'm still testing this board. And believe it or not, that, that question that I just answered is a very popular question here. All right, looks like only these two keys are there. Okay, not a problem. Cool beans, we are good. We are good to start building. What app am I testing with? I'm using config.qmk. Basically, it's QMK Configurator's test mode. This is the way you get to it. Let's try there. Is when, when you're on QMK Configurator, there's a button here called Test Keyboard. You can click on it, like so. Everything tested green when you tested. Your hands may be more, maybe less shaky than mine. All right. Let's see, where's that plate? So usually when I build a board, I like to put all of the switches into the plate first. But since Chart here has chosen to do Novel Keys Creams, I need to be a little bit more careful with that just because creams are no notoriously tight. So if I misplace a key, it's gonna be a pain trying to, to like remove it. So we are not gonna do that quite yet. We're actually gonna do it the single key approach. The cobalt says, have I ever done a split keyboard? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. All right. I did a, what was that? I did like an ErgoDox. I've done a Let's Split. I've done a Nyquist. I'm not a big fan of, of like split boards. I don't like how they look.
or done as in built them. Yeah, I built them. I'm assuming he means done because I'm building a board right now. guys put stabilizers in, especially if they're screw-in ones, I highly suggest you use washers. My washers are 0.3 millimeters thick. Very, very thin. Just enough to, to isolate the metal screw from the PCB. What's my thoughts on tented keyboard like the upcoming Type K? Um, I've never experienced a tented board, to be honest. Um, most tented boards that I've seen though are usually very like, they're um, lifted up, but they're very flimsy. Like the stand of them is, is very flimsy, but the Type K looks very, very solid. So, I don't know. chart are you sure you don't want ISO <laughs> so I'm building your board with ANSI right now it's your last chance it's your last chance to say no Let's see Chalna Cook says what Thickness where your washer is 0 0.3 millimeters. Because if they if they get much thicker, what happens is you can't screw your stabilizer on properly. Like I've seen people do up to 0 0.6. But you know bought a whole bag of these, so I was like, why not just use them all? Says, hey Merlin, hello to you too.
chart says, the 67 sounds amazing. Spacebar and backspace are so soothing. <laughs> hey, um, did you want a split right shift on this as well? You gave me enough stabs to do like a full one, but was wondering if you wanted a split one instead. Because it'll give you more keys. And no one really uses right shift anyway. <laughs> no, just normal. Okay. All right. It'll be normal then. Normal right shift. Normal right shift, 2.75 uses right shift. That means you type the standard way. Hyper, but at 85 words per minute. Dang. I had an older engineer at my former workplace. And yeah, he seemed to be in his like mid to late 60s. Definitely a peck typer, but he typed that fast too. I was quite impressed. Alright, here is the difficult part for stabilizers. I need to figure out where this guy goes. This seven you go. It's not there. It's possibly there. Actually that's not too difficult. You can only go in one place. I was a little concerned that I needed to take out some keys, but no, the, the, the holes are sufficient. Perfect. says hey hey man thanks for joining in we are in the middle of building a kbd 8x mark ii it's actually the first one i've built on my channel this is the i think this is actually the second tkl i've ever built on my channel here All right, looks like we're good. We put away some things and we can test all these stabilizers, see if I lube them correctly. <laughs> the first being your Jane, yes. And there goes the apple cedra. All done. I will have to get another drink in just a bit. But here we go. Let's test these out. Let's test these out.
Shard, out of curiosity, what key set are you putting on this? Because for more for for my testing, I'll be putting on white on black on it again. Metropolis is going on this. Nice. Or Mizu. Okay. And I need to grab. So you need to grab a 7U space bar and a 2.75U right shift. The unknown German says, the right arrow on my Tofu 65 hits the case. Any idea on how to fix it? First board built today, super stoked. The right arrow on the Tofu hits the case. Uh, that sounds like the PCB isn't aligned properly. you right there I think my space bar is a little bit over lubed. Everything else sounds all right. out soon if you need something dm me on discord all right thanks for joining in okay so once again chart is the customer for today's build previously built his kbd67 Doesn't look over lubed. It's probably on the other side. Okay, that looks over lubed on the other leg. There 
we go. That was the problem. Sasuke says, what did you lube the creams with? Oh yeah, that's a good question for chart. Chart, what are the creams lubed with? The chart says there are 205D0. Ah, okay. And chart did not buy it Seracoded. He had to Seracode it because KBD fans did such a fabulous job with their QC. Seracoding cost him 150 plus tax. On top of the $300 plus shipping he paid KBD fans, or 164 to be exact. Because here in Washington, we have a 10% sales tax. What is Seracote? Seracote is the coating that they put on guns. So it's really durable. Right, let's try that again. Let's see how your the stab sounds. Ah, much better. Feels much better too. typing if that's because we don't have a plate yet. I'm not sure about this one. Okay, I'm just gonna be extra cautious. Maybe just put a faint amount extra dielectric grease on the shift key and the backspace. Just to be extra cautious. exception. There's lots of questions here. How much did you end up paying for 8x plus error code and switches and stabs in total? Um, I would say that that depends on market price. But the keyboard retails for two for two two hundred ninety nine. Sarah coding was one sixty four. Uh, what else? Switches are what six six fifty for a pack of ten and all that. Mm 
Lubing is probably what? Anywhere from 40 cents to $1 a switch. Ready to start soldering, guys. Put stuff away here. There we go. So just to make sure all stabs in place. Backspace, enter, right shift, space bar, left shift. No other stabs present. Awesome. Perfect. All right, let's start populating this board. So as I said earlier, creams are notoriously tight. So hopefully I don't get any issues with this board. Let's at least put on the Let's at least put on all of the corner pieces. Yeah, that's tight. Whew. Let's put on all the corner pieces. Is that the NK65 V1? Yes, that is the NK65 V1. In anticipation of NK65 V2 this coming Tuesday. So since since it's an in-stock sale, I'm wondering if my discount code will work. If you guys use discount code WIZARD, you may or may not get 5% off. But I, I would be very curious. Very curious. Here, let's go put that in here. Novel keys. Yeah, if you guys do want to get a NK65, use my discount code WIZARD. Captain Ladies Man says, I use take keys a lot. Believe it or not, none of that money goes to us. It's just, it's just a kickback towards all the customers. Nothing actually goes to any of us streamers. What do I think about the NK65? I actually have a whole review about it on on YouTube. I actually really like it. There we go. Okay, let's do some light soldering. Pardon me, as I turn on my fume extractor, it's gonna sound like a vacuum cleaner coming from next door. How would I compare it to a Tofu 65? I would much prefer it over the Tofu 65. How much will this NK65 V2 cost? Um, there will be two of them available. The budget one will have a polycarb case going at about 95 bucks. And the al aluminum one, I think, is $10 more than last time. So it'll be 180.
so what I'm gonna do this time around As I learned on the KBD67 Mark II, it makes the whole build easier if I populate the switches first around the two flex cuts on the PCB. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I, let's see, people, people are talking about the poly one. I am personally trying to get the poly one because I already have an aluminum one. So hopefully, hopefully I will get it. And depending on which one I like better, the alu or the or the poly, I will sell one of them. All right, chart. Have a good time at work. If that's where you're going. You know how to reach me. I do. the DZ60 works with screw instead because that's what I bought. Trying to evaluate which way to build this. Oh, there are flux cuts in the plate as well. So the plate is actually more bendy. Okay, I think I have an idea. Hold on. I think it may actually be better if I populate the plate first where the flex cuts are and then solder it. That would probably be a lot easier. Okay. Um. See, would that be easier? So just let, let me test something out really quick. Can I actually pull the plate up? I actually think it's going to be much easier to put it on the plate this time around considering the plate has a bunch of flex cuts along with the PCB. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. Good thing I only half soldered in the corner points. So we're just going to desolder those really quick. have here is my Hakko FR300. Saved me so many times. 
See what people are talking about here. Any info on when the NK65 V2 drops? It drops this Tuesday at 12 o'clock EDT. That's 9 a.m. here if you're on the West Coast. I actually have to go into the mechanic next week, so I purposely scheduled it for Monday instead of the original Tuesday so that I can get in on this drop. <laughs> to match up where the flex cuts are and populate those switches. So that would be basically, basically all the alphas. Okay, there we go. Populate all the alphas. Let's see, got a few people here pinging me. Unknown German says reseeding actually did it. Thanks guys. Cool. My Tom says, is it possible to be a compatible board so it doesn't work with BIOS because of the VIA firmware? Um, no. Let's see, let's see a couple more follows as well. Katonex, Kaji, No Proof, Ballas, Bobby Slayer, Spanky, Xab, Dylan Kinnett, Matt Black. Thanks guys. switches. I see the case of soldier yeah in just a bit contact switching is very expensive because I have to like clear this desk bring it up and like put put everything up again well you will see it in time Is that the Alu NK65 on your desk? Yes, it is. This is the V1, by the way. Remember, Alu NK65 and the new Polycarb will be on Novel Keys on November 30th, or on June 30th, sorry. June 30th at 12 EDT. What monitor is that? This is the LG 27 inch that I picked up from Costco. I don't have the exact model number. 
but it's the high refresh rate one. I've got two of them actually. Your friend is gonna try to get a Polycarb NK65. Hopefully it doesn't sell out in seconds. Um, it will most likely sell out in seconds. Mr. McGurk says, is it 1080p or 1440? It's the 1440. OSA sleeves is going to sell instantly. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, these are super tight. I'm wondering if I should just attempt to do it where I populate the entire plate first. That might actually save me more time. Yeah, I think I'll try that. Since I noticed that these switches in particular actually go into each of these holes really, really easily. See, it's like I'm not having to push much just to get them in. See? Come on. They're very, very loose fitting. So I can theoretically just populate the entire plate. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's do that and see what happens. Famous last words. Just gotta make sure that they all match up. All right. Okay, I can skip that hole. Perfect. Okay. All right, we good, we good. Can do all that. 100 viewers today, awesome. Must be because I'm doing a giveaway. <laughs> we, we don't even know what the giveaway is quite yet. See, Nine Walker subscribed at tier one. Thank you so much. Looks like you've been subscribing for four months now. Thank you. Any boards coming in? I do have a few boards coming in. Mostly customer boards, actually. <laughs> I've had to pay for quite a few things around the house. As some of you know, just a few weeks ago, I had a flooding situation here, which I had to vacate and all that. So I'd been living in a hotel for almost two weeks. And after everything was repaired, this was like the perfect time to just renovate, right? So I'm like, okay, why not? Let's just renovate the entire place. So we're doing closets, we're doing part of the kitchen, all that good stuff. And for those of you who have done home renovation before, that stuff isn't cheap. So rather than spending money on boards, I'm spending money on this house. <laughs> <laughs> see secret blue says hello what is up boss building a kbd 8x that's what's up mcgurk says nk65 is plate mount stabbed as well give us a stab key test later sure unicorn 855 says we just recently got two new windows KB purchases may be on hold for a while, I know, right? Like, KB purchases seem small. But then, like, you realize that it just adds up super quick. Like, Chart, the owner of this build right now, um, the board costs 300, right? But to fix up all of the damages, he, he had to spend, like, 
an additional one 164 bucks and then you gotta buy switches you gotta buy keycaps you gotta buy stabilizers this adds up it's up really fast anything coming in for myself um i have an id80 which i'm still waiting on for and a key cult and a 7v <laughs> those are all the boards i'm in on for myself right now Wish I had a key called and 7V incoming. What key called color did you choose? I chose silver. I wanted to pick something very generic. I already have a blue Jane, so I did not want another blue TKL. And as most of you know, I am actually not a big TKL user. I'm more of a 60 up to 75% guy. I guess I might as well show it while I'm here. This is currently my main board right now. This is the Xeno with the GMK Merlin. Yes, I did get my GMK Merlin. Finally. Though I did not get my entire order. I'm missing a few things, so I'm waiting for Kono to get back on me on that. I also haven't been paid quite yet for my designer fees. So I'm assuming that will happen once the once the group buy is all done and everyone has got their shipped. Merlin R2, possibly. We'll see, we'll see. It's, uh, it's a lot more competitive these days. So many top designers out there. but not GMK. Maybe I'll do like SP, who knows? We'll see, I, I do have other sets in the works. So we'll try and get those out first before I do any kind of Merlin. What is your turnaround? Might have you, m might have you build my Cyber Voyager? Um, ping me on Discord. We'll talk about that. Usually you go into a queue, so it depends on how long that queue is. But typically, I build boards on Saturdays, and then I hold onto the board for like a week just to make sure all of the switches work and all that. And then it gets mailed back to you after one week. Are links allowed in chat? No, because other people have posted questionable content in the past. Only mods and myself are able to like post links. Singapore says hello. Hello to you too, man. Whew. Okay. The, the end result of this board will probably dictate 
whether I whether or not I use my own set of creams and on what board. We'll see. Super Seducer wants to share a YouTube video. You you can share it on my Discord server actually. Whew. My word. Super tight. Or in my case, delivered to my work. Yes, if you are local, if you are local and you are relatively close enough to the places that I normally fre frequent, I will meet up with you and deliver your board by, by hand. So if you do live too far, I'm not going to do like a house call. Like if you really want me to do like a house call, like I'm here in, in like Seattle, Washington. And if you, if you're in like Yakima or something, Yakima is like three hours away. I think if you live that far and you want me to do a house call, I will definitely charge you for that delivery. <laughs> Hand delivered and a kiss. Um... I charge extra for the kiss. <laughs> Fly to Canada to build your board. I have been known to drive to Canada, so, you know. Let's see, who was it? I think, um, you guys know who Mr. Petrov is. Mr. Petrov lives in Portland, and I frequent Portland quite a lot, especially since my wife's family lives down there. So I went over and I built one of his boards for him. No kiss with COVID. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm not gonna risk my life for you, man. Two hours max. Chart, I thought you said you were leaving. <laughs> Why are you back? Go, go back to work. Wizard hat house call worth it. Yeah, chart. What would you do if I showed up at your workplace and I was dressed up as a wizard hat? And then I'd be like, I'm I'm here for so and so. <laughs> What well, what would your coworkers think? <laughs> this chart. Okay. Got most switches in. All of these other ones I can play around with a bit. Okay. Here we go. Let's make sure all of these legs are straight. Make sure all the legs are straight. Chart says, that's what I was expecting to be honest. That's, that's funny. You're not the first to say that. Back during the, the Seattle meetup of 2019, Seattle summer 2019, I was supposed to meet a bunch of people at some burger joint. So I went there during lunch, right? And I think I was coming from work that day. So I did not have any of my get up, right? I showed up there and everyone was like, oh, I really wish that you would have walked in with your wizard hat. And I'm like, sorry to disappoint. But maybe I will. Maybe I will. Alright, it looks like all the legs are straight. <laughs> I think we're good. Alright, I think we're good. Oh my gosh. 
did not recognize me without the wizard hat. People want the hat more than you, apparently. I know, right? You guys can buy this exact hat. It's on my Amazon store. There, I'll go post that into chat. Amazon. If you go on there, you can buy this hat for about, I think it's seven bucks right now. And since it's on my Amazon store, I do get a small cut of that. <laughs> Go. So you guys can see what I'm doing here. Hey Chart, this board is actually easier to build than the KVD-67. In my opinion. Everything just kind of fit right in. Even the flex cut ones. start soldering. Turning on the fume extractor again, pardon the noise. Not having to spend 45 minutes straightening legs, I know, right? Alright. Let's get to soldering. To solder the ones I previously had. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Perfect.
What temp do I solder at? I'm currently at 550 Fahrenheit. But the question should be more, what temperature do you use for the solder that you use? Because the type of solder plays more of a role in that. Freedom height. You got it. Thanks for the help the other day, says Dutch Master. Okay, one row down. Sean the Cook says, nice, didn't know that. Yeah, um, there are different types of solder, solder, and it's the different kinds of composition that's in them will require different, different temperatures. For example, if you use lead-free solder, such as the type most prevalent on OEM boards, you will need to probably solder closer to, well, I've had to solder at 650, which is much hotter than I normally do. Are you a fan of the Type K tented Alice keyboard? I am not a fan of any of the Alice keyboards, actually. If I had to choose between the Space 65 or the 8X, which would you pick? I would pick the 8X, to be honest. Well, I don't know. I, I would pick the 8X because I know the PCB is very legit. But in reality, I would probably use the Space 65 a whole lot more.
You're putting cream stems and gat yellows with heavy 205G0 lube. Super smooth so far. Really, you gotta let me know how that feels when you're actually typing. Because I've done the reverse of that. I've done gat yellow stems in a cream housing. Unholy pandas are the best linear. Wow, Static Age is gifting one tier one sub to MacMarone's community. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. You're sharing your rewards to five others in chat. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Teal Rice, for doing that. Captain Fix says, have you tried UHM stems before? Yes, I have. They they make they, they make any switch extra smooth, but it takes whatever switch that you put into and it makes it sound less than what it used to <laughs> so it it's like a trade-off do you do you want a better sound or do you want a smoother switch you can't have both gotta support the crates thanks man thank you so much it's like people like you is one of the reasons why i do a one month giveaway Every month, I try to give away something to the community, and you are lucky because today is the day that I'm doing a giveaway. I haven't exactly announced what it is yet, but for sure, it is not the KBD-8X. <laughs> not there yet, but maybe one of these days. W one of these days, I do hope to be like, all right, guys, today's today's giveaway is a key cult number two. And I'm giving away 10 of them. <laughs> That would be amazing. Be so amazing if I could ever do that one of these days. That'd be nice of those. Yeah, I know. I think I need to be like, what? Linus Tech Tips level. No, I'd be like Oprah level. <laughs> Oprah. Key cult for you! Key cult for you! Alright. To everyone watching right now, if you look under your chair, you should have a key cult. <laughs> and if it's not under your chair, it's probably in that SUV that's parked in the garage right now. <laughs> But like I said, one of these days, you know. <laughs> it's 
So when Mac Merlin gets big enough, he will have live studio audiences. Sure. But to be honest, it's like how, okay, how, how exciting is this? Like just watching me solder. Imagine having like a live studio audience and I'm just sitting there at a table soldering. <laughs> not, not sure about you, but I, I would not pay to watch that. <laughs> like I would not travel all the way to a studio just to do that. <laughs> But if it was guaranteed that I would get a key cult, then probably, yeah, I would. <laughs> There's a chance for a key cult under your chair. Like, more like, you would either get a key cult, or an invitation to join a cult. Did you win the raffle for your KC, or did they hook you up? I won the raffle fair and square. I did not reach out to them asking for one. Though, I don't know what happened on the back end. Maybe, maybe they saw my name and was like, oh, let's give Mac Merlin one. Who knows? I, I was on the top clack server and people were like saying, oh, Merlin, did you join? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, for sure you'll get one because you're a streamer. And I'm like, I'm not so sure about that. Pessimism is 0 out of 1 on KC Raffle. Still new, so hoping next round. Did you try and get in on the on the Heine TKL? Are those games lubed or filmed? These are lubed, but not filmed. You have lost four TKL raffles in a row. One of these days you will win one. Maybe when I have a live studio audience. And there'll be key cults under, under everyone's chair. All right, Merlin, the Oprah of Max. <laughs> oh man, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing.
All right. So we got most of the major keys in. Just have to put in all the smaller ones now. Let's see. Let's put in the backspace. Backspace key. Backspace. Enter. Right shift. Snappy snap snap. Left shift. And he wanted stepped caps lock. So that's a whole different position right there. Okay. And centered seven U. There we go. So we've got a few more switches after this, but we should be good. Did I join the Heine raffle? No, I did not. I had spent all my money on the key cult. So I figured I should give it a rest. <laughs> mm. I also didn't know there was going to be a Heine TKL. Is there a Dr. Phil of Max or a Jerry Springer? <laughs> how, how would that go? Would they like invite someone who got scammed on Mech Market and someone who got scammed? Or someone who got scammed and the, the person who did the scamming? <laughs> Bad teenager refuses to touch tight. Oh boy. All right. Let's see, now I got to figure out these these side keys right here. So who was the one asking for the for the Cerakote case to be shown again? I'm going to show that right now. Here we go. This is the Cerakote. The Cerakoted KBD-8X. And as you can see, it's it's got the wind key blockers. Look at all that. Just as a recap, the reason why this is Cerakoted is because this arrived from KBD fans scuffed to hell. So it's like, it's either he got a refund or got a brand new board that, that would take months to arrive or he could just have it Cerakoted locally and get it within a week. He chose the latter.
the x also what do you think of the square x 60 percent um i think it's fine i'm i'm honestly kind of done with 60 percent right now so whenever i see a 60 percent i'm just like yeah that's all that's all right N nothing special See, I need to figure out so 1.5 1 1.5 1 1.5 1 .5, and 1.5 there we go that should be enough Just line it up preferably. Xstaff says, what's your favorite layout? What's your preferred layout? I'm a big fan of the FC660 layout. Oh yeah, that sounds good. They're inconsistent at times. All aluminum case is D1N. Yes, it is. The KBD-8X is an all aluminum case. Soldered that bit in as well. What is there that you dislike about 60% that the FC660 has? I do not dislike 60%, I just have a whole bunch of them now. So I'm kind of just expanding my horizons. Hopefully I get these last two keys correct in terms of layout. Let's see, how does this go? Is that right? There we go. I think we're good. Yeah. That looks right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Coming together, it is coming together. So as of right now, I am done with half the soldering. Board is half soldering. For those of you who have never watched my stream, the way I like to solder is I like to solder only one leg at a time. So this entire board only has one leg soldered. And that's so I can properly align all of the switches better. And if I see any mistakes, it's easier to desolder one leg than two legs. And so far so good. So I will now do a speed run and solder the rest of the legs. Here it goes. Ghost quickly says, Merlin, do you know how I can use QMK to use switch LEDs as layer indicators? Switch LEDs? Um, you'd have to program. Yeah, you, you could probably do that. You'd have to dig into the code, though. Three more days till the NK65 V2 drops. Zujo says, Yo, sir. Yo, too, as well. See, I also see a couple more follows. OZ. Terry Bad and Dark Wizard. Ooh. A Dark Wizard has followed me. Should I be concerned? You would be more concerned about the Aussies. <laughs> you know, to be fair, um, I feel like like the first couple times that I did it, that I did a giveaway, a lot of people from Australia won them. In fact, a lot of my a lot of my winners have been international, and it's really sucked during COVID season because some people have messaged me back and be like, "Merlin, I think the package is lost," and I'm like. I don't know what to do. <laughs> like, stuff sucks.
When do I expect the key call, says Ozzy? Um, as soon as you're able to sit in a live studio audience scenario that I'm presenting in and that I've actually said there are key cults under your chair. <laughs> or in the Mercedes Benz that I've parked in your garage. The unicorn says, why did you park my car in my garage, though? <laughs> Perhaps for magical reasons. Trill News says, I have a Tata 68 with KBD67 mini USB. Do you know if I can swap the PCB to a V2 with the USB-C? Um, I believe so. You would just have to check the opening on, on your case to see if it's big enough to like house a USB-C port. How's the build going so far? I'm certainly interested in getting this on the GB. It's going pretty well. This is, personally, I feel this was easier to build than the KBD67 Mark II. Is ridiculously tight, or is that just my infinite keys? Um, I don't know about the infinite keys, but they were definitely tight when putting on the plate. Done with the soldering. Let's do a quick QC check. 
Make sure all of my solder joints look good. That one looks to be a little bit globbed up. Trying to make sure all of them look conical. They're not like fat blobs or anything like that. Or some of them, like this one, seems like I didn't put enough solder on. There we go. And we're good. I think this is great. Finally turn off my soldering iron. Turn off this fume extractor and ah, nice. Peace and quiet. Perfect. Okay, let's um let's see that the board actually works, right? Here, I'm gonna go back to QMK configurator. QMK configurator, plug in the board. And hopefully, hopefully everything works. Okay, that's a good sign. All lights are still turning on. Hopefully all keys will work, right? Oh, F3, hello F3. That was quick. Well, hello there. There we go. He's not triggering us. It's only triggering sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna have to replace that switch. Oh, there we go, now it's working again. Okay, I'll just keep an eye on it. As things progress. It feels like there's something wrong with the switch itself. We'll see. Perfect, okay, let's see. Couple things to note, like scroll lock and paw still aren't quite registering. Let's check that out. What are they programmed to? I'm gonna spin up VIA really quick. And VIA is not on this board, so why don't we flash it first? Let's flash it with VIA. Let's see. 
We see a couple of follows here. F Fatality, Function, Oxo Works. Thanks, guys. Just gonna flash this with the newest VIA firmware for this guy. So you just make sure you get the path correct. KBD8X Mark II, perfect. So let's make KBD fan slash KBD8X underscore Mark II colon via colon flash. Let's press the buttons. Oops. I think I pressed it. Reset. And flash. It's building the firmware right now and compiling, 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 linking, flashing. Yay, it's flashing. All right. Okay, looks like it's flashed. Unplug. Let's pull up the via. All right, there's the via. Plug it in. Loading and boom. Perfect. Okay. There we go. So those keys are now scroll and pause. Um, sure, let's test it out over here. Still not working. What? Here. Let's just make that into an A key and a B key. Key tester. There we go, A and B, perfect. Check that F3 again. All right, F3 is working now. Okay, I think we're good. We can actually put the board together. Clean up this PCB a bit. Let's see. Here we go. After soldering, sometimes you generate excess flux that stays on the board. And you'll see a lot of this as brown or yellow residue that goes around each leg. Um, this is fine. This isn't too big a cause for concern but excess flux has been known to cause corrosion. So if you have corrosion on the side of your legs over here, your key may cease to function. Also, I think it looks ugly. So in order to get rid of all that, I use isopropyl alcohol over 99% and a toothbrush. And I just use it to clean all that excess flux off. What about 70%? 70% should work too, but you know, the higher the better. I like to go over 90 just to be on the safe side. Is the process safe for the PCB this? Yes, this is absolutely safe. This is how you're supposed to clean the PCB. What are you dipping that into? 
This is the isopropyl alcohol that I'm using the cap for. Ooh, get to see my keyboard seats being cleaned. Yeah, for sure, man. And also because it is COVID season and I have put my hands all over this board, I am in fact disinfecting this board. This is how you used to clean your motherboard and graphics card, yeah. This is also the recommended way to clean your board if you spilled sugar on it, or if you spilled soda on it, I mean. This, this does a good job getting rid of all of that sugary compound. you need to be very careful like you can't just douse it with with like alcohol because a lot of our switches are well lubed along with a lot of our stabilizers so if you douse it with the with the alcohol you'll just get rid of all of that lube you don't want to do it that way this way is a lot a lot safer so there there is one drawback doing it this way as I said, uh, flux can potentially cause corrosion. So by doing it this way, I'm actually breaking up all of the hard pieces of flux, but I'm also spreading all of that flux across the entire board. So after I do all this brushing, I need to take Q-tips and pick up as much of that flux as I can. Also, please do not reuse this for your teeth. Ingesting flux is pretty bad too. <laughs> I think I'm the only builder I've seen clean flux off a of PCB. It's because it's not 100% mandatory. I just think it looks better. I'm probably also one of the few streamers you've seen that's actually worked at a company where we had to solder things. Seeing those brown goopy spots kills you. Yeah, it's like right now it's a black PCB, so it's not it's not really that big of an issue. But when you have a white PCB, like my Romeo here, which has like a semi-clear back, having all that flux visible is gonna ruin the entire experience. Says, so you actually understand soldering at a more technical level. Yes, I, I do have a degree in electrical engineering, but I'm not an electrical engineer. I'm more of a project manager these days. <laughs> Seeing flux getting cleaned up is so satisfying. I know what you mean. And there, there are some globs here that look very tight here. Let's see. So the way you clean this off, you, you need to imagine it's like brushing. You need to like do it in a circular motion. 
and do it at an angle as well, just to really get at all that flux. Otherwise, it won't come out. Imagine it like, like plaque. <laughs> Wow, that looks so nice now. Oh my word. Be gone, Flux. Okay. For the most part, I've gotten all the biggest pieces of residual flux gone. And as a result, I've also spread the flux all across the board. And you, you know that's happened because after this process, you touch your PCB. And if it feels sticky, that's the flux. That's the flux that you're feeling. So now I need to grab some Q-tips. Grab a bit, hold on. Say so, unicorn sass, perhaps Merlin knows more about that. What do I know more about? Have a sudden urge to go brush my teeth with alcohol, says Ozzy. Please do not. All right, we have some Q-tips here. And usually, if there is a lot of flux involved, your Q-tip will turn brown or yellow relatively quickly. But right now, it's not doing it, so yeah. Usually I see a lot more flux when the board has been previously desoldered. But some flux is being conductive, says McMerlin. I think so. You could brush with whiskey, but that would be super gross and super expensive. These are just like what? These are two bucks at my local Fred Meyer. Whiskey, the cheapest whiskey I've seen is at least, what, 10 bucks? Plus state taxes. Okay, yeah, I'm picking up some, some flux right there. There we go, that's no longer sticky right there. You could brush with whiskey, but that would be super gross. But it's tastier. I do know like back back in the olden days, you would use leftover whiskey to, to like clean your your um bars. go no longer no longer sticky perfect okay I think we're good we're good for that there we go we're good now put this board together we can put this board together Woohoo! 
Okay. Let's pull this out. Whew. There it is. The Cerakoted KBD-8 Axe. And let's see. Let's see if I can pull out those photos again. Those horrible, horrible photos. <laughs> Here we go. No KBC join related. KBD fans offer a Cerakoted option. No, this is a... Here, I'm, I'm actually going to explain this. Right now. Let's do... Here, so you guys can all see the horror. This is how the customer received the board. You know? $300 plus a few weeks of shipping plus shipping cost. This is how the customer received the board. And, you know, if you wanted to grab another board from KVD Fans, it would have to be a, an even longer wait. Look at that. Look at that. As I said earlier on the stream, this is unacceptable. This is absolutely unacceptable. See that? Look at that. This this is garbage. That is absolutely garbage. Like no no one should be subject to this at all. So this customer of mine had to go to a local Cerakote shop and get it done this way. You know, um, for the most part, it covered all of the issues. Like here, let me pull up the ones that it didn't. Um, here we go. This guy right here. Here we go. This thing. Um, that's right over here. And you can actually still see the gouges. It's very, very faint, but you can see that they're there. Um, I have not seen any other indication of the rest of these. So I think the Cerakote did a very, very good job. Okay, is this damage from the shipping? It's from the shipping. It's from QC at the factory. And Chart actually told me that when he picked up the box, it was rattling because the weight was loose. So imagine, imagine the kind of damage a rattling weight, a rattling brass weight would do to your keyboard. All right, let's take it apart. Let's take it apart. Yeah, I, I have suggested that because the brass is still really scuffed around the corners, he could try taking some light sandpaper and just going across it several times. I might even attempt it for for him, but he, he hasn't actually given me like a yay or a nay. KBD fans equals trash. Um, I wouldn't say they're trashed. I think it's just a lot of people think that because it's a custom board, which it is, it's automatically going to be a quality board. But custom doesn't necessarily mean quality. back and then lift it there we go see now that we have access to the back side of the top how did the Cerakote work on this let's see let's move all right 
here we go. Um, can I see this particular scratch? No, I cannot. The Cerakote really cleared it up right there. Very nice. All right, now that we have a better look at the bottom, see anything else that I'm seeing? No, everything, everything looks good. I think the Cerakote fixed, I'd say about 90% of the problems. Do I know how much is the Cerakote? Um, Chart is local to me here in Seattle, Washington. He went to a local Cerakoting place and the final cost, tax included, is 164 bucks. All right, here we go. Let's do this top mounted board. One hundred sixty-four. Which shop? Um, they're called Specter Industries. I, I was gonna show it on stream, but all of their photos had guns in it, so I'm not sure how that would work with Twitch terms of service. So to save myself potential blowback, I figured I'd not show it. All right. Looks like he gave quite a few screws here. I uh, have to figure out which one's which. I would imagine the case screws are... Hmm. Let's see. Ah! Or was that not all in the same bag? Jeez. that all up. Make sure nothing's there. Okay, I am going to guess that it is the the shorter gold colored screws that go into the brass plate. based on my experience with top-mounted plates. And from the looks of it, I am correct. Porkchop Express, thanks for joining in. Yeah, as I said earlier, this board is currently on group buy up till August 15th. But as you can see from the customer's photos, um, I would be very, very cautious of the quality control there. I would greatly factor in Cerakoting, anodization, or powder coating as part of your budget. My car talk has been stuck at San Fran Customs for over four days. That is the same deal with my, with my ID80. Actually, my, mine is stuck in San Jose. All 
right. Do all all holes have a screw? Yep. All holes have a screw. Let me tighten them all up. go. Very nice so far. Okay, let's 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 put it together. Okay, I am going to estimate that I should be able to put some foam in this. Let's try it. KBD fan sells foam for it. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's put some foam in there. Like so. I'm actually running out of foam. I should probably pick some up from a store later on. kind of foam do I use for that? I use toolbox liner foam that I picked up from my local grocery store. Is that just black drawer liner? It can be. It can absolutely be just black liner. This is three, three millimeters. Picked it up, picked up an entire roll for about seven bucks. And it looks like it fit. Looks like it fit just fine, perfect. What benefit to having the foam in there? It helps dampen some of the rattles, some of the reverberations that occur inside like a, like a hollow case. Alrighty. 
just says on KVD fans, it says small scratches are not flaws. Return and replacement are not accepted. <laughs> wow. All right. Ooh, that's heavy. Oh my word. All right, I'm gonna put away the rest of these screws. And we'll get to putting on more keycaps. If you mind, please do not buy. <laughs> that not just on the brass weight, it's everywhere, man. Oh, that's for the brass part. Oh, okay. All right, that's not... That still sucks though, to be honest, because the brass because the brass is an accent piece. It's meant to be like the ooh wow factor. So when you can't get the accent piece right, why even showcase it? All right, this is it. It's an ooh scratch wow factor. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. So before we continue putting keycaps on it, I do want to talk about some of my sponsors, but also I have been parched since the beginning of the stream. I'm going to grab myself another drink real quick. BRB. All right, guys, I'm back. I ended up just making myself a DIY milk tea. This is iced oolong tea with milk. <laughs> All right, okay. Let's see, what am I putting on this? I'm putting on just a basic JTK white on black set. It's the same set that I used on his KBD67. So here we go again. He seems to like darker colored boards, so I figured darker colored key sets would work just fine. KBD fans equals quantity over quality. I would have to agree. Just add boba in your set, I know, right? Price reflects that though, yeah. No, KBD fans isn't the top tier customs people, you know, and their prices do reflect that. Just keep that in mind, guys. Also the fast out of stock time sadly for better quality ones. Yeah. Three, four, five, six. Six 
goes there. Oops. Did my, did my music stop? Yes, it did. Let's try that again. Shipping prices say otherwise. I guess while I'm doing this, let's talk uh, a little bit about all of my sponsors. So I can accomplish two things at once here. <laughs> here. Go. So I said earlier, this stream would not be possible without the majority of you guys, all of the followers, all of the subscribers, and also a bunch of the vendors who back me when doing this. My first sponsor is actually Zeal PC. He is quite literally the first sponsor that I ever got. Zeal PC is located in Richmond, Canada. They're most known for their Zelios, Telios, Helios, and a bunch of that. It's a very well known for having very, very expensive switches. Um, I think they have the most expensive switch in our hobby right now. I always recommend them to, to newcomers because if you don't like them, they, they already represent the most expensive switch you can get. So everything else you try is going to be cheaper. Um, with that said, I always recommend only buying them during a group buy, either through Zeal PC themselves or on drop. Because you save so much. You save so much when you do that. Keep an eye on Zeal's Instagram though. He is currently revealing a new switch, a three-in-one switch that is all linear, tactile, and clicky. Imagine that. All right, Xenophobia, thanks for Lincoln. My next sponsor is Zeal PC. Oh, actually, I already said that. My next sponsor is actually Novel Keys. <laughs> Let's see. Novel Keys right now is running quite a few group buys, but the group buy or the upcoming quote unquote group buy that I want to point out is the one for the NK65, which I have been showcasing this whole stream. This is the NK65 V1. Come this Tuesday on June 30th. Um, at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or 12 EDT. The NK65 V2 budget retails for 95 and the, and the aluminum version will be 180. Get them while you can, because they will go really, really quick. And since these are in stock items, I am, I'm really hoping that my discount code, which Xenophobia linked up above, discount code wizard, will be usable and that you can get up to five percent off your order well let's try that so hopefully hopefully that is the case all right let's talk about some of his his current running group buys the first one is gmk boneyard actually let's do this let's just click on updates live it's much easier gmk boneyard right here gmk boneyard is a GMK set selling for 120 bucks. Group buy will run until July 3rd. Delivery time is in February of 2021. This will take a very, very long time. This was de designed by Tom Berry, who also created Carbon. So if you guys like a darker colored set like this, you've got a few days left. As I said, base is 120, 40s is 40, Novelties are 35, and the Domino is also 35. Niv180 says, will there be an uncolored polycarb version other than the purple? At a later time, but they will first release in purple. All right. The next one, the next group buy that they're running is, is also 
another GMK set. GMK Midnight Rainbow. Oh, this one just ended. Awesome. This just ended yesterday. Never mind, we'll not talk about that. I wonder why it's still still as part of the live. <laughs> oh boy. Right, we can talk about Cam Ghost. Cam Ghost is running until July 3rd. This is a low contrast set. So if if you don't like seeing your legends, this might be the set that you get. I'm I'm honestly not too too big a fan of this. Cause if you can't see the legends, why bother having legends? <laughs> Despite that, this is a fairly affordable set. Every kit here sells for under 50 bucks. And I believe getting a full set for TKL will cost you, let's see, let's let's do the math here. Alphas are 35, TKL mods are 45, so that's 85 bucks. 85 bucks for TKL support, full TKL support. And if you want a numpad, that brings you up to 110. So for basically compatibility for everything, that's 110 bucks. Not bad, not bad. Once again, this set runs until July 3rd and they expect to ship them out to you by December, 2020. Right, my next sponsor is Dixie Mech. Dixie Mech is located in Alabama. He's currently running GMK Moto 2. And a little thing about Dixie, he actually he actually just contacted me yesterday. He's like, Merlin, what's your address again? So I gave him my my address. Apparently my 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 Mech Madness price is set to be delivered and should be coming sometime next week. So I'm super excited. I won a GMK Hamon and a Duck Sidewinder or Sidewinder slash Raven, whichever it is. So stay tuned for a upcoming duck build. But yeah, in terms of pricing, the standard set goes for $99.99. I believe this is the cheapest set being run this month. See that? If you missed out on Modern Dolch round one, this is your, your last chance. <laughs> Yeah, TKL for 99. That is very competitive pricing. Yeah, so once again, because this is a GMK set, expect it to be delivered sometime next year. He is approximating it to be Q1, but we'll see, we'll see. My next sponsor is a fellow QMK collaborator along with Xenophobia and myself. This is Baking Pie of Kibayo. You may also know him as Danny. Danny sells a bunch of small keyboards such as the Iris, the Nyquist, the Viterbi, the BDN9, which I t I'm actually looking to buy. So I'm glad to see that it's currently, oh darn, it's sold out already? I was gonna buy it, shoots. <laughs> but yeah, this is the BDN9, it's got two rotary knobs there fully qmk compatible Let's see static age says q and v2 oh yeah i forgot about that but yeah out of everything on his site right here since since a lot of his boards require a, a pro micro i always recommend getting peel away sockets like so these 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 are basically soldered into your board so that you can easily hot swap your Pro Micro, like so. Because you know, Pro Micros are garbage and they break really, really easily. <laughs> XBass has that new split on Keybio. Let's see, where, 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 where was that? Let's see if we can find it. Q frequency. Frequency Rev 1, um, I don't think it's quite on there yet. Let's 
Oh well, I guess he hasn't put it on online yet. But the Q4C Rev1 is available, if that's something that you guys like. Very cool. All right, my next sponsor is Project Keyboard. Project Keyboard is also located here in the United States. He's currently running a group buy of the Allen Gate. So the Allen Gate is a board designed by another fellow streamer, Mr. Keebs. Check it out. And the reason why I'm talking specifically about this board is because if you tune in on my Tuesday streams, I heavily use Mr. Keeb's tool, his KLE to QMK converter, in which I take a KLE with my with my columns and rows added in, and it converts it to the .h file that you need for QMK. So I I like extensively use that, and this is one of the boards that he has created. It's currently going for 350 bucks as you guys can see by the layout here let's take a look at it it's a 40% with separated arrows and a numpad and check out this spacebar guys there are indicator LEDs in the middle this is very 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 unique I have not seen this on any other board <laughs> Yeah, three three hundred fifty bucks is is relatively steep. Um, I haven't quite decided if I want it quite yet. <laughs> See, polycarbonate is also three hundred fifty. Hmm, very interesting. Very interesting. Let's see. Typing angle is seven degrees. It's also a top mount board. Brass mid layer and acrylic diffuser included. PCB is QMK firmware and VIA compatible. I'm going to bet that since Mr. Keeves and Gondo Lindrum are both in Brazil, Gondo is the designer of this PCB and Gondo Lindrum is actually the person who first taught me about ESD protection. So I'm, I'm going to assume that this board has ESD. Let's see if I can find it. Look, it's not being listed as a feature, but I am I'm very very sure that this is this is going to be an ESD protected board Here, let's see. Let's see if we can see any more photos of the PCB ah. There we go designed by Condola. Here we go USB data lines and ESD protection awesome excellent perfect Perfect. That has confirmed all of my suspicions. So if, you, if you guys are looking for a very unique board, 40% with num row, arrow keys, and a unique spacebar layout, definitely check this board out. <coughs> Compact with arrows appeals. Very true. My next sponsor is Canon Keys. Canon Keys is actually my newest sponsor. Um, I know that if you go to to his website. He's still talking about the Claravel keyboard open until June 30th, but when you click on it, it's actually all sold out. Sold out. Sold out. You can't click on it anymore. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I think you can still buy the PCV. Yeah, you can still buy a PCV. Don't know what you do with just the PCB, but yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, let's see. He is running a few group buys right now, actually. He's doing cat explosion. I feel Canon Keys has done so many cat sets recently. Let's see. This is another one of those cheap kits that you can get. Like every kit here is really, really cheap. I think the most expensive was, wait, was it the text mods? Yeah. The mods itself are the most expensive kit that you can get. There's 60 bucks. Very nice. Um, I mentioned it before, but if I had to pick which colors I wanted, I would do the alt alphas. The red is a little too triggering for me. That's, that's too much for me. 
I would do this. This actually looks really nice to me here. Let's see if we can find it. There we go. That looks really, really good. Teal Rice says, I spent 380 on that cat set. Oh my gosh. A cat is supposed to be cheap, but I guess if you do, if you do buy everything, that's going to be really expensive. <laughs> Look, they've got French. Very cool. Very cool. All right, guys. I know I said that, that I was going to do sponsors at the same time that I'm doing keycaps, but I guess I got distracted, so I'm still doing keycaps. <laughs> Here, let's do this quick. Let's do this quick so I can do a typing test and all that. I think I may have paid more than 380 for Cat Drifter. Oh my gosh. But you like Cat Drifter. As long as you like the set, I guess it doesn't matter if you spent 380 on it or not. Would you join the Time TKL that's supposed to come out next month? Um, the last Time TKL did not have a QMK compatible PCB, so I would say no. QMK is quite important to me. <laughs> if you guys didn't know. What are the keycaps on the board on top? This is the Novel Keys and Tai Hao Collaboration Black on White Cubic Set, which I'm hoping to replace this Monday with the Cherry version of this, or the, the, the Cherry profiled version. GMK white on black is on drop. Yeah. This is not GMK white on black. This is JTK white on black. I think I bought this oh so long ago for 50, 58 bucks or something. This served me very well. It's kind of like a really, really default key set, so it looks good on almost everything. Caps lock. pull out the rest of my kit so I can populate this.
insert. Let's see. Scroll lock. Print screen. There we go. All done. All done. Do I go for GMK Boneyard or wait for GMK Bread? I'd say Boneyard. Boneyard looks much nicer. Oh man, check it out, guys. Here, let me lower the lighting a little bit. Oh, too dark, too dark. There we go. Looks pretty good, I'd say. There we go. Now to actually type on it. So Chart's switch preference is actually very similar to mine. He likes heavier switches. So these are creams that are 70G bottom out. The last board I built for him was also 70G bottom out. So I quite like it. I quite like it. Um, one thing different about this is that whoever he got to lube his switches, I think some of them are more heavily lubed than the last board that I built for him. I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> We'll see. Cool. Here, let's actually lower down the music. Pause. I said pause. There we go. Let's take this out. Bye bye, NK sixty five. See. Oh, shoots, I just realized something. Um, it doesn't have a Windows key, so I can't. I can't do any of my Mac OS stuff. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Let me let me change things around here. Let me change things around. <laughs> Completely forgot. Yeah, let's do this. Let's put that board up there. And this is why WKL is unusable on macOS. I would disagree because on macOS, you typically have the command key where the alt key is. Here, let me, let me just set this up properly really quick. Here, here, here. let's do this. Let us play around with Via really quick. Bottom row, I want it when keyless. There we go. And what else do I want? I'm going to set caps lock to control. Perfect. And then this one can be left GUI. Where's left GUI? Oh, it's actually win. It's called win. Hamshot says, they star color their KBD at X3 black, or is that some sort of deep navy? Um, it's, it's supposed to be dark gray. Everyone on KBD fans actually said, oh, that's a nice blue one. He's like, no, it's not blue. It's gray. There we 
we go. Let's do that as left win. Perfect. Okay. That. Here, let me set that back to like pause or something. <laughs> there we go. Okay. And Q W E R. This can be reset. Set that to reset. Q M K lighting. Let's actually turn off his underglow. There we go. Let's turn off his underglow because there's no way to show underglow here. Perfect. Okay. Okay, the board is now set for my needs. You can do a typing test. Wait, what? All right, let's do this. Yeah, here we go. Let's listen to how how these mods sound. Yeah, I, I do feel that the switches may be a little bit over lubed. But as long as he likes it, I think it's fine. Yeah, I don't know who he commissioned for the lube job or he could have done it himself. We'll see. We'll see. All right, let's do this typing test. Let's do this typing test. I'd be screwed up. Hundred forty four accuracy of ninety one per cent. Try that again. Hundred forty three, yeah. We're on the hundred forty ish. Hundred forty ish marker. Um, I had been typing on his KBD67 for the longest time, and I can tell already that this has less, less reverberations than the KBD67. In terms of typing feel, I think I prefer his KBD67 mainly because of the lube job on those switches versus the lube job on these. I think these ones were a little less subpar, to be honest. But don't tell him that. <laughs> All right, let's do one more and we can do the giveaways.
147. Too late and I recorded a video no less, subpar. <laughs> Alright, awesome. Okay. Let's see, I kind of gave a hint as to what the giveaway would be already. And no, unfortunately, it is not a KBD-8X. And it is also not a key cult. If I could, I would, guys. But I think I'm... I'm a couple subscribers off from that still. <laughs> Alright, so we'll... Slado says, I want to race you on Type Racer. Yeah, so what I will be giving away is a kit of one of these. I'm giving away another CFTKB Romeo kit. So what I have here is a finished product. Finished product. This is from CFTKB. If you're used to the Discipline 65 or the Mysterium or any of those boards, this is his 40%. This is his 40%. Um, it is a completely through hole kit, which means all these, all these things that you're seeing here, all of these components, the microcontroller, the diodes, the LEDs, the capacitors, the reset buttons, you need to solder all of these yourself in addition to the switches and all that so yeah this is my copy this is my copy it's running xda scrabble right now but the winner of today's giveaway will get a kit like so romeo like so these are very very small kits you it's literally what you get See, I am not going to open this because it is sealed. It is sealed by CFTKB himself. You guys want to know more about his kits, definitely check check out his website. Basically, it's just CFTKB.com. It would be funny if someone won it and hired Mech Merlin to build it. I don't think anyone's ever done that before. Like Most people who have won something from me have just wanted to build it themselves. But yeah, this is this month's giveaway. As I was saying it earlier on the stream, I really, really appreciate everyone for joining and for supporting me in this endeavor of mine. And this is just my way of giving back, little by little. One day I will be giving away key cults. One day. <laughs> but we will start with stuff like this. I try to give away things that are relevant to my channel, such as keyboard kits, you know? <laughs> so let's say. Um, Due to recent shipping issues that I have been seeing, um, I unfortunately have to limit this group by, I mean this um, giveaway, to only within the continental United States and Canada. Just because other people who I've shipped stuff to have not received their packages or have lost the packages and I just, I just don't know what to do about that. That's just, you know, that's that that's the effect of COVID. That's the effect of our of crappy shipping. Like who knows? Like like right now, just on a personal note, um, I'm from the Philippines. My mom is still in the Philippines and one issue that she's been having trouble with is getting getting all of her vitamins. They're completely out of stock in her town. So I've tried to send her vitamins and it just didn't get in there. Yeah, so it's like I I like spent several hundred and it still hasn't gotten to my mom. So like imagine sending keyboard parts when I can't even send vitamins. So just to be on the safe side of things, I have decided to just limit this to United States and Canada. But if you have like a like a local forwarding address as long as it's within these two places, I can still send it off to you. Did custom steal them? We have no idea. No idea at all. All right, let's see. What are we gonna do? What? Let me open up my trusty Nightbot. Nightbot. Shipping is a mess. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's just too much. Vitamins are hot commodity in Asia, absolutely. All right. Let's do, let's say. 
Any recommendations on what what keyword I should use? And what what keyword should I use for this? Let's say you like it says Romeo. No, I think I've done Romeo last time. Juliet or something related. Where art thou, Romeo? That's a little too long. Um, Montague. I did Montague last time as well. Let's try Ideal Guess as a wizard. Um, Tybalt. Yes, we used Tybalt last time too. I just mill max my first ever custom and works feels good. How do your giveaways work? Um, the way my giveaways work is I, I have a keyword. You know, the, if the keyword is like Merlin, everyone who types in Merlin within the next, what, five minutes will be entered into the giveaway. And then I will press the roll it button and someone, someone who typed in that keyword will win. And as and after you do win it, I will give you a minute or two to confirm that you are not a bot and that you actually want it. And in this particular in this particular giveaway, to confirm that you are actually in the United States or in Canada. Because unfortunately I cannot do a giveaway for international due to shipping at this point. Alright, let's see. X Bash says DiCaprio. <laughs> I like that one. I, I actually really like that one. Let's do keyword DiCaprio, all one word, all lowercase. D I C A P R I O, DiCaprio. All one word, lowercase. And keyword begins now. For the next, let's see. Let's keep it open for three minutes. Niv180 says, are forwarding proxies okay? As long as I am only shipping it to the US or to Canada, it'll be fine. But anywhere else, it's just too much of a liability at this point. DiCaprio, DiCaprio. Everyone's doing it. Currently, I have 34 eligible users, not bad. 39 39 eligible users that's actually a pretty good chance of winning so hopefully all of you have mailing addresses here in the United States or in Canada because I, I I will verify that <laughs> I will verify that so you've got two more minutes left yeah once again you have a chance to win the Romeo CFTB CFTKV kit Keep in mind, this is just the kit. I have done a few mods to my unit to make it look like this, such as 3D printed this case. Actually, I did not 3D print this case. CFTKB sent it to me. But what you will get is actually just going to be like a typical sandwich mount. Let's see, do I have components? Actually, I do. Hold on. Let me grab components. Looks like there's two minutes left of the giveaway. Here we go. Here is an open kit of mine. This is an open kit of mine. There we go. See? The open kit, well, the kit comes with some foam. It comes with all of the necessary hardware needed to put the board together. Comes with an FR4 top plate. Well, this is the plate that you put all your switches in. It's got the clear acrylic piece that goes on top, followed by the back plate right there that has Romeo engraved on it. Of course, if you don't like this style, you can always go on P3D, I believe, and get your own plate cut. All that good stuff. Yeah, this is actually the kit that I built. I just 
decided not to use these and just went with this instead. So you one minute left. If you guys want to be part of this giveaway, please enter DiCaprio and you will be entered in. Please make sure that you have a mailing address in the United States and in Canada because I will not ship anywhere else due to the, the recent COVID shipping situations. See, I have 53 eligible users. Ooh, there's actually a good chance to win. Very good chance. All right, looks like we got 10 seconds left. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Boom. Bobby Slayer, congratulations. You have won the giveaway. Bobby Slayer, are you are you here? There we go. Yeah, Bobby Slayer says no way. Bobby Slayer, do you accept the giveaway of a black Romeo? You have about a minute to reply. Okay, there we go. I, I accept 100%. Awesome. And do you have a mailing address within the United States or Canada? I'm in Canada. All right. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Um, forward me all of your information on Discord. You can message me on Mac Merlin hashtag two nine nine nine, and I will be asking some questions just to verify your identity. Cool, very cool. But yeah, as, as I said earlier, I try to do a giveaway every month. This month was the Romeo, and I actually have quite a few more of these. So you, there is a good chance that you will see more. You guys just have to tune in. My Tom says, have fun building that. It's a fun soldering practice. Uh, I'm actually not a big fan of building it, but sure. <laughs> have fun. <laughs> or if you don't want to build it yourself, you can always hire me to build it. Yeah. So here we go. Xenophobia says, Three ho through hole soldering is kind of zen. <laughs> uh, some cases, some cases. All right, guys, just to recap what we did, I built a customer's KBD-8X Mark II. This is a Cerakoted version due to the numerous inconsistencies and scuffs that he got when he first received this board. I think he spent 164 bucks on the Cerakoting and the board itself was 300 bucks. So just keep in mind, if you do join the KBD-8X group buy, be aware that stuff like that can happen and you may want to factor anodization, seracoding, or powder coating, or even painting, I guess, into your budget. So keep that in mind. Um, this had cream switches in it. And let's see, what else can I say? I like it. It sounds pretty good. I do wish his switches weren't so over lubed because I feel like I feel like he may have used a different luber, but I will talk to him after this stream. Big Taro says, I'm nervous for the Maha now, for the Maja now. Yeah, I know, man. All right, let's see. My next stream is actually tomorrow evening, tomorrow evening at 7.30 p.m. PST, in which I will cover upcoming and ending group buys. So if that's stuff that you're interested in, if you wanna see what group buys are coming out next week and what group buys are ending, definitely check it out. So basically be in be a one hour stream in which I cover ending group buys, starting group buys, and and group buys that I missed last week. Cause just like looking at my list right now, I'm seeing that I missed at least three of them. So yeah, tune in tomorrow if you want that kind of content. Alright, folks. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Let's see Longenberry says, yeah, stuttering. Oh, I see that. I see that now. Ooh, okay. Let's see. 
That's weird. My, um... Everything's still still in the green. That's odd. Oh well, good thing the stream is ending anyway. Maybe my internet is just dying right now. Who knows? All right, guys. Thank you for joining in. Uh, next giveaways will be this time again next month. Basically the last Saturday of every month. All right, guys. Hope you have a good rest of your Saturday. And I will catch you hopefully tomorrow evening. Goodbye now.